so our last speaker, Kavya Perlman, uh, well known as the Cyber Guardian, founder of the XR Safety Initiative. Kavya Perlman is an award-winning cybersecurity professional with a deep interest in immersive and emerging technologies. She recently launched a novel, XRSI Privacy Framework, uh, for the XR and spatial computing domain, uh, Kavia is constantly exploring new technologies to solve cybersecurity challenges. Uh, she has been named one of the top cybersecurity influencers for two consecutive years, uh, 2019 and 2018, and a cybersecurity professional and though, and though leader for the year uh, 2020 by IFCEC Global. Kavya has previously advised Facebook on third-party security risks during the 2016 U.S. presidential elections and works as the lead of cybersecurity for the oldest virtual world, Second Life by Linden Lab. Kavya is one of the top 50 speakers in the cybersecurity industry and constantly shares knowledge via, uh, via webinars, conference talks, and blog posts around application security, cloud native technolo technologies, machine learning, and immersive technologies such as XR. Uh, I will leave you now with Kavya. Uh, thank you very much for accepting our invitation today. Thank you, Himani. So appreciate it. You guys can hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you. Wonderful. Well, thank you for the invite. And I'm going to share my screen real quick. You guys have you. already shined light on who I am and what I do. Um, but since I'm speaking to students, majority of the students, I would want to share another thing about myself is um, I'm originally from India. In 2007, I moved to the United States. And for about four to five years, I was a hairstylist. I was cutting hair for $10 an hour for about 25 uh, hours a week. Very simple life. And at that one point, I read a book. It must be around here somewhere. But yeah, it's called Cyber War. And then I decided that I'm going to do, I'm going to be a cybersecurity officer. So if if any of you are in a place where you're thinking, oh, I am just a student, these are all these advanced technologies, what can I do? Well, I can tell you, just with a spark and a dream and desire to learn and passion, a lot can happen. At the moment, as uh, thank you, Himani, for mentioning all those awards and everything is wonderful, but I really just love my life. I love to learn. And so if you are one of those people who are curious, who have a passion uh, for learning and uh, would like to solve problems, I think this is a perfect domain for you. And then I finally you know, stumbled upon XR. So let's get back to our topic today. Um, I'm going to talk about how XR Safety Initiative addresses privacy safety challenges in XR. And I know I've got 15 minutes and I really want to share this really, really important subject that we've been really looking into off lately together with various other partners. Um, so we know that pandemic is raging and all of these, uh, you know, there is so much going on in the world right now. In fact, as I was just getting ready, there was news about more and more people of the heads of army and stuff were getting COVID and the market was tanking. It's like a lot going on in the United States and around the world, but there is no time to be exhausted. If anything that we have learned from recent announcement from Facebook, from Apple, it's something that we have to pay attention to privacy, safety, and essentially ethics and create responsible innovation. So first of all, many a times people, when they talk about XR, there is this sort of a, you know, war of words is what is XR? What is VR? So as XRSI, we actually took the time to very, our very first effort in 2019 was to define these terms. So I encourage you all to go to www.xrsi.org to download these terms and create a common understanding whenever you're starting a new project. 
this is VR, this is AR, this is XR. You can actually do that for every project that you do. So you have a common understanding of taxonomies. And if you're not able to do something, you know, standardize these, come to us and we'll help you do that as well. Um, and I'm not going into the definitions. I kind of assume that most of you know that, you know, XR is, you know, AR, VR, uh, MR, and it's an umbrella term. VR provides full immersion, augmented re reality provides overlay. But clearly, when we do these things, when we take these technologies, they bring risk. They bring the risk of privacy because now, right now we're using our uh, heads, you know, phones uh, to do AR stuff. We're using HMD for VR. But at some point, you know, AR is going to be consumed by these glasses. And I hope my Siri doesn't go off, but, you know, I, I want to be able to say, hey, Siri, uh, order me an Uber. And don't do that, Siri. Um, but yeah, so that's like, you know, when that happens, all that payment data, all of your gaze pose data, all of this is being processed either on device, off device. We have to be concerned about what happens to our privacy. Uh, safety. And here is a point that I want to make. We, we, we at XRSI always try to emphasize on safety. Why? It's not just security. And safety to us doesn't just mean physical safety. Because what's happened now with virtual reality and augmented reality, our attack surface, you know, the cyber attack surface, you can consider it, or just like a, any attack surface is no longer a network or an endpoint. It has now come to our living room. Our brains are being influenced using these technologies. So we are talking about the physical well-being, the psychological well-being, and then just like a surrounding safety of our well-being. So that's why it is no longer just safe security. We always talk about safety. And then ultimately, in the era of deep fakes, where you know some people say they don't want to be the arbiter of truth. Well, who's going to be the arbiter of reality when anybody can just kind of plug themselves in and start to spin up new alternate versions of reality or overlay something on top of your reality? So this is something that we have to figure out. Or do we want to lose trust or we want to do something about it? So XRSI, for those of who you don't know about XRSI, we are a 501c3 worldwide nonprofit standard developing organization. And uh, from past few years, I had been hearing that there are no standards in XR. What do we do? And so we got busy trying to establish that baseline standards. Our mission is to help build safe, immersive environments. And I would say immersive and in safe and inclusive. This is something that we added on later. Um, currently, we have about four programs that we run, one being Cyber XR Coalition, which is our diversity and inclusion effort, Ready Hacker One, which is our media and awareness platform, uh, Child Safety Initiative, which is dedicated to protecting children in XR. And then finally, we have a Medical XR Council where we take the same approach, but into the medical and healthcare field. And we basically have very simple three principles. We are unbiased, we tend to remain ethical, and we, we are very consistent with our mission. We basically, we just want to help build safe and inclusive XR. Today, I'm gonna stick to a very specific subject amongst the few things that we tackle, and that is privacy. Privacy is the top of mind of every technology companies and their consumers. Almost every prominent CEO has made a public statement affirming their commitment to privacy, consumer and legislator. All of these people are, you know, sort of now tend to, you know, they're, they're sharpening up their understanding and their controls around privacy. There are new laws that have come about in recent years, just like G G general data protection regulation, CCPA, all of that. So clearly, I mean, you know, somebody says at the top of the uh, CEO of the company says uh, privacy is a human right. Oh, future is private. So what's really missing? And that's what something we thought about and at XRSI, we got together with multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary experts and looked into this very question, what's missing? What is not correct? And especially through the lens of XR and spatial computing. This is what we discovered. And something that I would like you guys to remember as well, privacy is a shared responsibility. 
what I mean by that is I can, as an organization, provide you controls, but you as a consumer have to exercise it. And XR technologies are not just about person who's using the technology, it's about bystander. So they have to exercise their rights as well. So it's kind of a collective responsibility, especially when we are living in this extended realities. So I just want to point out the, the same uh, along the same line in September. In fact, uh, just earlier, you guys uh, heard Alina Kudlovsky speak about some of the stuff um, together with OpenAR Cloud, Michigan University of Michigan and Georgia Tech University. We XRSI launched a privacy framework. Uh, the goal is to provide a very simplified language, and I'm going to breeze through some of these things because uh, all of this material is available on XRSI website for free for you to download. XRSI framework basically divides your and our collective responsibility, organizational responsibility, into four simple things. If you're concerned about privacy, if you're an indie dev, if you're a big tech, start with four things. Assess your risk your devices, what are you intaking, what kind of a, uh, you know, information are you ingesting, Get gather an assessment. In fact, we have laid out uh, lots of different risks that are novel risks that come along with XR. And then it is an organization's duty to inform people if their choices are being affected. How do people generally inform they use privacy policy? But when it comes to XR, it check the box privacy policy is not going to do it. So you have to layer it up. And those are the kind of controls we laid out in this framework. Then you have to manage these risks. You have to tell people that, you know, hey, this is what XR means. Because some of the people, they may never actually be um, understanding the ba you know back end of this technology and they shouldn't worry about it but they still have to be made aware of their privacy issues and then finally that's the another thing that we are doing is prevent because in the era of seeing is no longer believing once you see something you can't unsee so focus on preventing harm rather than just protecting and then going quickly over it this privacy framework has four areas, 14 functions, 125 controls. Um, we're taking a novel approach to privacy where it's not just check the box, privacy policy, that's just the minimum. What do I desire when I go into an experience? How do I want to remain private? It's almost like, you know, if I have a living room versus a bedroom, what, should, what would I want? What would be the ideal thing to do? Maybe I would want the company to invite me and talk to me about privacy on panels and whatever and exchange information with researchers or whatever they do. Um, novel risks, as I said, XRSI took the time to categorize the new risks into these five categories. So we've baked those into the framework. We talk about informed consent. While the word, especially the XR uh, you know, stakeholders, they constantly talk about this killer app, killer app. I say, well, while you look for the killer app, please make sure that it doesn't kill humanity, it doesn't undermine our democracies. So you need to inform people in the era of constant reality capture, what exactly are they signing up for? And are they signing up for, or are they just ch checking a box? Uh, likewise, there are some special data consideration because thus far people are like, oh, gaze data, biometrics data, but what does that look like at the data structure level? How can I get an organization all the way like a massive big tech firm to tell me exactly where that data is going? Where is it being processed? Is it going into your AI algorithms? How is it impacting different uh, you know, individuals and whatnot? So all of this has to be taken into consideration, something we did. And I already mentioned prevents harm. There are other principles that some are existing, then we bake them into our own sort of privacy principles or the trust principles that we call it, trust, inclusion, and accessibility. And basically the idea is now we have these embodied AI ready to assume a virtual embodied avatar. We as humans are going to interact with them in our extended realities. We have to remain human centric. Um, 
And this is kind of what the details of this framework looks like. So each of this control, such as, you know, establish mechanism to create awareness and inform parents and guardians about privacy risks to minors. This control could be further developed into two to five pages. And you can actually really go granular with what that control looks like at the organizational level, for example. And now, before I close, I want to ask all of you students to pay attention to this privacy framework, because, you know, when Web 2.0 era uh, was going on, we didn't have a chance at writing down the rules of privacy. Now, as a result of this, a few years later, and I was personal witness to it, we had democracies that, that are undermined. We have... Uh, COVID, bad information, misinformation, we have deep fakes. So this is something that we can sort of prevent if we get it right. So for three months, this is actually going to be in a request for comment period. If you're interested in privacy, if you're curious about privacy or, or about XR or how it infuses together, you should contact us. And plus, we're going to do webinars to give more you know, information, how to actually provide these uh, comments, submissions. For each submissions, we are also again going to give you guys money, which is for which we have actually dedicated $12,500 just for this development. So in the next three months, we're taking the submission January 1st. We're going to give away these, this money to whoever makes good submission, be accepted. So what, we, what I need from you is to come together with me discuss about privacy safety and build this community and wherever you're building community let's have these discussions about how privacy how how it impacts us inform each other so lastly i just want to leave you with this sentence uh, this quote is privacy is like oxygen it is invisible and very easy to ignore until it's taken away so with that I will take questions from you guys. Uh, thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, I have, uh, we have a question here. Okay. Uh, it says, uh, are all the companies uh, obligated to keep their users privacy? Are all companies obligated to keep their users privacy? Yes. yes. That is a big, bold yes. The only, the only caveat to that is uh, jurisdiction. So the rights of an individual may depend on where you are, such as in Europe, you are a GDPR data subject. So as a data subject, you get right to deletion, all of this. I'm in California. We recently launched a California Consumer Privacy Act. So these laws are sort of determining to what extent do we get those rights. But if I were to, I mean, you know, you saw Tim Cook, Mark Zuckerberg, like all these people, why are they saying that? Because it is our fundamental human right. Privacy is a right and every company is obligated to present to us, what are they doing with their data? And if they're not in any jurisdiction, contact me. Cause I'm like reaching out to all these governments to be like, hey, you need to pay attention to this. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I have a question here from a friend. Uh, he said, is it easy to move from being a cybersecurity software, uh, from having a cybersecurity software career into a cybersecurity career in AR? Cybersecurity career in AR. So thank you for that question. And this is a very legit question because when I first uh, started XRSI, this was our goal too. We actually, together with Ibrahim Bajili, who is another one of our advisors, we discovered cyber attacks in VR. And I'm pretty sure if we went looking, we will discover novel cyber attacks in AR as well. Another point to consider is right now, we're just sort of scratching the surface of these extended realities. More and more that we start to connect with people, we start to create our ex realities in these environments and we start to do commerce. At that point, 
more malicious things would come in, right? Cyber attackers would come in. So we need to do forensics, you know, we need to determine what went wrong. If I'm, you know, I'm of a mind that, you know, I want to order my pizza in VR or AR and have it delivered by a drone. Now, who's going to determine the integrity of the entire transaction? What if there is a man in the middle attack, somebody hacks my pizza or my order, but you know, these things are really normal things. Or what if some people start to just create a worm like scenario by sending out phishing emails and links or phishing links via chat. So whenever you create, there is a different kind of risk. You're concerned about my virus, malicious stuff. And so these kind of risks are being, has to be considered at the moment. There isn't a really huge push towards cybersecurity. And it shouldn't just be about cybersecurity, it should be about safety. Because we should talk about harassment, we should talk about bullying, we should talk about what happens when That's a person true. shows up as a hijabi avatar. And, you know, because this happened to me when I was at Linden Lab, sometimes people would say, oh, she's bringing Sharia law, she's the head of security, which is like a horrible thing to hear. But, you know, people have true. this preconceived idea. So there is a lot more that we have to take on. And I would say stay engaged with our mission. This is precisely where we are going with granular with cybersecurity stuff and we'll be directing people to, you know, where to look, what industries, what companies are actually hiring or doing some work in cybersecurity realm. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, I have one more question. Uh, the question is, Aren't we, uh, aren't we knowledgely uh, forgetting our right to privacy by using free products, knowing that, uh, that they're using our private info as payment? Yes, this has been a very common and very highlighted recently with the movie. I don't know if you guys have seen Social Dilemma movie kind of hints out at how our data is being monetized and then our privacy is being undermined. Uh, that is correct. So just earlier today, I was, uh, I sent a tweet. I said, taking a shot is easy to say, oh, privacy, F Facebook, delete Facebook, and this sucks and that sucks. And, you know, Facebook does this and that. That's easy. Taking a stand yes. is hard because it might be that you have to spend 200 extra dollars to get a Valve Index or any other headset and maybe not the Quest 2. So that's taking a stand. But then being a part of the solution is the hardest. And I am proud to say that that's probably my part is I'm building those bridges with the same big tech organizations, universities, people such as yourself across the globe and bringing all these experts together to understand this. So what I would say to you, if you feel helpless about it, take a stand first, you know, say, you know, I used to save money for my birthday dress, like for months and months. We can do that for a VR headset or AR, if you're really <laughs> yes, so hard with it, right? Save money. Yeah. Don't give in to these big tech companies until they share with you everything that you need to know about privacy. And that's my demand is we need to demand privacy. And then finally, get involved. You feel helpless, come together with me. I'm trying to solve the same problems as you guys are thinking about. So let's fix this together. Yes, uh, thank you. I have a question from our first speaker, Zakaria. Uh, oh. He said, are you working? Yeah, he said, are you working already with the European GDPR committee? If yes, how does this collaboration look like? So the, this collaboration started, or I would say my first conversation started in 2019. I was in Italy and we were prepared to meet with some of the AI focus group. Why AI? Because, you know, the, the XR is still a bit of a stretch for a lo lot of these government organizations. Currently, we're discussing with government of Japan. We're trying to reach out to government of India. So we're, we're trying this effort. The challenge, which is the hugest challenge right now, and this is especially true for medical XR, is everybody is buried under COVID. And the privacy protection around COVID is an important thing to tackle. And that's what's happening uh, is some of our goals are, it's 
people are listening, but they really have to prioritize carefully because human rights are at risk. AR, human rights, you know, like uh, it, it, there is a, there is a, you know, I can't push it too much unless I have to. So yeah, that's the issue. Uh, we have another question. Mm -hmm. It's from NS Abraeli. Why not other cities or country? Uh, why not other cities or countries do not apply strict rules for privacy like CCPA? Why do not other cities apply strict rules of, for privacy? The truth is, it like really CCPA. begins. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you for that question. So other countries and cities, one is they may not be aware of these issues, such as Government of India is a prime example. They made a app called Aadhaar, which takes your fingerprint and takes all of your data associated with it, which works with third party vendors. So they left all this data out. And when they when researchers like myself and a couple of my friends, they, when they pointed out the very grave flaws, they said, no, we our app is very perfectly secure. What are you talking about? <laughs> it was just such a shrug. So some governments don't even know. It, they're not aware of how badly it puts people like ourselves at risk. The second thing is, as a constituent, as a citizen, we have to demand this. They're not gonna just come up and be like, oh, today I'm gonna work on privacy for everybody. No politician would do that. You have to pressure them. So in America, we have something called as lobbying, you know, going out to the Congress people and asking for our rights. We have, you know, so the Democrats, democratic countries have these mechanisms where you can go to your congressmen and where you can go to your leaders and demand these things. Start outlining what those things would look like. This privacy framework, that's exactly what it's meant for, is to outline the things that I would like to see in a legislation someday and have the consideration of these eyes, gaze, bone, all this data built into a regulation, built into a law. It's a long process, just like you asked earlier, you know, why GDPR and CCPA, what's the process? It's a very long process. You have to be really patient. You have to have suburb, but there are results, CCPA, GDPR, you know, so we have to be relentlessly asking for privacy from all directions, from academia, as a student, as a citizen, as a tech executive, and only then people, a few governments would listen, and then people, rest of the governments will follow suit if we are relentless. This is a hard battle. It's not easy to just like, you know, ask these politicians for your rights and have be given away on a platter. You really have to fight for it. Yes. Uh, I think that that was our last question. Uh, first, thank you so much for answering the questions. Uh, and by the way, and, and I would also like to thank you for being part of our IEEE day and for all the knowledge you shared with us tonight. Also for motivating students to follow their dreams. Uh, the stories you shared with us were very inspiring. Uh, also, thank you for giving us a lot of ideas about cybersecurity and the importance of privacy as a shared responsibility and for raising awareness about it. Uh, it was really a pleasure to have you with us today, tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you, Himani. And if I may just do one more declaration before I go. Earlier, I was listening yes, to sure. Alina Kadubsky, and she was asked a question, what is your organization doing to make sure Morocco is also part of this, you know, XR evolution? And so um, OpenAR Cloud and XRSI and many other organizations, we have what we call is a coalition. And this coalition actually takes the time to go out, do outreach to various different entities around the globe to make sure that other countries are also involved. There is representation. It's constantly like looking for ways to upgrade diversity and inclusion. So what I really want to say is in, in about a few days, we're going to actually roll out membership for this coalition. And I would encourage and in fact, reach out myself for anyone that may be interested in learning these cross section of cybersecurity, Annex R, privacy and safety. And that's where we'll have this conversation. We'll make the student membership very, very nominal. 
but yeah, I would encourage everyone to Thank keep you. up with us and then we will be able to help you out and sort of keep this you know, global community together. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Uh, we have one more question from our okay. speaker, Shiva. Yeah. Uh, she asks, uh, what, is her, uh, what is your take on social media platforms such as Twitter becoming a a playbook for for dictators. Twitter is filtered in some countries uh, like uh, Iran and China, but only for citizens. Politicians using them for spending propaganda. What should be Twitter's policy for that? Uh, and her yes, question is more about tech human rights violation. Thank you. So, uh, Kavya, if you haven't uh, heard the question well, uh, it is in the private chat. We yeah. can check it. Uh, yeah. Let me that yeah so social media platforms are becoming a playbook for dictators it is so correct you know i was uh, over back at facebook in 2016 and uh, you know we saw everything go down firsthand in the united states over the years the cambridge analytica issue became prominent and now with covid not even being able to you know ascertain what's real what's not this is going to get much worse in the era of xr so we can't really it's like really sad to express that disability and helplessness this is the reason why xrsi does not actually engage with anyone in china yet uh now i'm starting to hear they want to have some kind of a better mechanism to encourage tech companies about privacy and stuff but there is a limit to which we can do stuff and if you go against the dictators I'm not sure, you know, what could possibly go wrong. So I would worry about the physical safety. I mean, we've seen how these dictators treat journalists and whatnot. Um, but as a tech company that's located in the United States, such as Twitter or Facebook or any other big tech companies, they can and they must take a stand. They should no longer just say, oh, we're not going to be arbiter of this and that. No, you already are an arbiter of truth by having a service called Newsfeed where the news comes from all those sources. You have to make sure that those news feeds are not causing harm. So these policies, at least specifically for XR, we have taken the time to sort of outline it. Um, we're going to try to push that back on these big tech organizations. We are asking for accountability. We're asking them to address these things proactively. And so hopefully, uh, you know, we'll have some chance at, you know, gathering a remains of leftover of privacy and organizing ourselves. If we can, you know, stay away from these propaganda like things. But unfortunately, you know, we do have to rely on the very companies. I don't know if you guys have heard of another threat. It's called coordinated inauthentic behavior. Sometimes they are these campaigns worldwide, Iran, China, all these dictator governments, they carry out. There is no one else who can solve this threat except for the very tech companies. They're the only people who are in a position to take down these propaganda, take down this disinformation. So we have to rely on them. And it's not that, every single person doesn't want to do it there is just plethora of priorities so what we have to do is push back and be relentless be like put this on top of your priority and when you do that then you start to see action then you start to see like nice new innovation principles come out because trust is a valuable commodity and these people need our trust so they have to you know give us to get something if we take a stand then yes, for sure, we will see some action happening. And we are seeing, it's just not, it's not as rapid. There's just too many priorities in the world at the moment. And the tech and human rights violation question, there was a panel that I was on uh, with uh, very many experts from human rights. And um, it, it, it's a question that will be answered very shortly with, from a lot of different people, because what we saw with Oculus Connect and Oculus connecting the Facebook uh, ID to the hardware, we saw how quickly the 50 Oculus users or 500 Oculus users that nobody cared about, and now everyone who may possibly once use these devices, their existing data will be connected to this larger treasure trove of data. 
So now everybody's paying attention. There is, you know, EFF is putting out blogs now. I never saw, you know, EFF say stuff about virtual reality. And then there's all these organizations that are jumping in to talk about it. Why? Because it's really important. We are we, we, we need to worry about human rights because they would be massively violated using our biometrics and whatnot. So we're on it, that's for sure. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much. We have another question uh, from Walid. He asks, can you explain the initiative you talked about earlier with the $12,500 uh, budget? Yes. So, Walid, if you go to www.xrsi.org, in fact, uh, I can put stuff in the chat, yeah? Uh, yeah. Yes, so so there is a privacy framework that we have put out. You can download that. And uh, within that framework, there is two, there is 125 approximately controls. Each control needs to be developed further with the eye of like, okay, let's say I say companies should maintain a control to prevent harassment. Now, what does that look like? To prevent harassment in virtual reality, what would you do? One mechanism that I have seen happen, it is Facebook's mechanism, is they have this, you know, a silent watcher, kind of like a cop that watches you in horizon. And it's invisible. It's their whatever AI monitoring or whatever. And it's not really watching you. The, there is two minutes of that uh, video or this, uh, you know, egoistic data, like the first person point of view that's being recorded. And as soon as somebody complains that I'm being harassed and this thing comes up, their sort of cop or their, you know, whatever moderator will pop in and will look at the situation, review the past two minutes. So saying that we want to build harassment, anti-harassment control, that's one thing. Now we get to be granular, like, okay, this is what it could mean. These are the few things that we could do. And then when you propose those novel consideration and the granular control for AR, for VR, you can put it in a page, you know, piece of paper, like two to 10 pages uh, and just submit to us. And if we consider any, like 80% of that consideration, if we take that, we will award you $100 for that contribution. So I want to um, put that link in the chat for everyone. Uh, I'll, I'll send it in the private chat. You guys can share. That's the link. Okay. And so 125, okay. pick your favorite control. What do you want to work on in privacy? What do you want big tech companies to pay attention to? Maybe you know something they don't know. How granularly can we develop this in AR? So once you have that knowledge, you share it with us, we'll make sure that it goes all the way and goes down into regulation is our goal. Yeah. Those are some amazing questions. Uh, and seriously, guys, you might be in Morocco. I actually have a team member who is from Morocco. His name is Mohamed Maduri. He lives in Rabat. And so you might be wherever you are. The world is shrinking. We are in this together. And there are all these challenges that are in front of us. And we all have to be in this together to solve them. Like I alone couldn't do it. So yes, keep in touch and ask me as many questions as you want. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you so much for your yeah. explanations and for accepting our invitation and being here with us today. It is Thank an you honor so for me. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Uh, Thank you guys. The honor is ours.